Greetings and welcome back to Bioshock Infinite Explained, um, a special walkthrough where we uh, take a, a unique look at all of the stories behind uh, Bioshock Infinite and explain how they all link together and uh, show how the ending kind of came about. So this is a series full of spoilers and if you don't want to um, know about them then I suggest you play through the game first before you watch this series. So on with part four. Um, I've reloaded this particular save which means we've got to pick up this uh, piece of gear again so randomly we're going to get exactly the same one that I got before so so much for the random theory and a little bit of nod back to Bioshock 1 there with the wrench of course we do see the uh, the wrench again later on in um, when uh, Elizabeth hits us in the face with it money did she just say that the the, the uh, that I'm only 4.9 inches. She shouldn't have been measuring. Feeling a little bit offended here. I uh, gotta head over to Monument Island to find the lovely Elizabeth up there, but let's go and investigate this property first for for monies and other such items. Now this is the uh the house with the artist. Uh, she is trying to describe us. Let's see how well she does. Apparently my eyes are squinty. Ah yes, red and curly hair. Squinty, uh, red-headed. Oh dear. I don't think we need to talk about my temperant. Temperant. I think my temperant is is well known enough. It's just quite disturbing that they managed to take down my shield with one shot, though. Hello. Good, good. So here we are. It's like looking in a mirror, except of course, all the blood stains have gone. That picture looks a little bit like Andrew Ryan, doesn't it? Um, but it's interesting, again, a kind of, unfortunately, a, a link back to real life history, history that, um, although I was the one that had done these actions, that lady there, you bad person, uh, was essentially kind of describing someone of um, an, an Irish, um, um, Irish descent, essentially using them as a scapegoat for someone else's actions, which uh, happened again and again and again. And of course, it does happen again in, thi in this particular plotline because we have the, uh, uh, the the situation where Comstock uses uh, Daisy as a scapegoat for uh, his own actions where, with uh, with murdering Lady Comstock. Because if you hadn't, if you didn't have picked up on that link, it is Comstock that kills uh, Lady Comstock um, it, because she won't accept or. or, or, or uh, she uh, almost decides she wants to go public about where the, the fact Elizabeth is not naturally her child and Comstock can't have that so he has to uh, take her out and starts the chain of events of turning her into almost kind of a, a beloved maternal figure to the island. Did I kill him or did he... is it? I would like a little bit more shield. I'm tempted to use some of our next in some of our next items to boost that, but we'll carry on with the plan for now. I'm looking at some of these lovely uh, light sources as we go around and uh, some of these spectacular views. Um, I'm a big, big fan of um, the screenshotting community um, in the PC games world, and particularly the work of uh, Jim 2.0. He has done uh, an absolutely incredible selection of um, Bioshock screenshots, uh, which I'll, li I'll link in the uh, description. But if you've got um, some time spare and you just want to have a look at uh, what kind of artwork is possible just using... Um, uh, the game it is well worth checking out his work so f free plug uh, to him there um, he obviously uh, does have a, a far better PC than me and is able to kind of run things at um, ridiculous o'clock resolution with uh, uber shadows and things like that and plus of course he's not trying to record videos, videos at the same time so here we are um, approaching the gateway to Monument Island Let's see what we've got to spend our vigors on. Now, last time I ended up spending quite a lot of money on things I never really ended up using, so I'm not going to get the Crow Trap aid, and I didn't really use Devil's Kiss much last time, so I'm going to save my 800. I'm going to try very hard not to die, and 
we will save the powers save the money for some of the powers that come later on that I'd really like to unlock. Now we are not alone here. Now, just looking at the difference between just a bit of strategy here, not perhaps not very advanced one. We're only going to get four possessions, but we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven crows. So we will use the crows to try and get through this lot here. But first of all, let us check out the uncanny mystery in Colombia. The word of the prophet presents. And of course, this is our first glimpse at the tears. The tears, which of course are caused by the machine, initially caused by the machines uh, made by Lutess and Lutess, but eventually end up being able to be caused by Elizabeth at will because of her special ability. Um, why does she have a special ability? Well, because she is only half in this dimension. She lost her finger as a baby and uh, exists in more than one reality. So, although. The people are mystified by the tears. We do not have to be. Oh, and of course, another machine. Hey, well, let's just start by possessing the machine. I wonder if we can just take out this whole area. Oh dear, was that was that the end of the machine? That's a shame. I was rather hoping the machine would take everything out. Now I've remapped my uh, aim down scope to my right mouse. Uh, obviously, coming from a kind of first-person shooter, that feels a lot more natural to me. But it's, uh, sadly, it's a it is a toggle rather than a uh, rather than a hold down sight. And I've remapped my vigors to uh, one of the buttons under my thumb, uh, B, I think it is. Hello. Reload and meander forward. And let's try and use some crows to. Nothing like a little execution between friends anymore. Right, there we go. There is quite a bit of recoil on this pistol, so whilst the first shot might be accurate, then the second one. Tends not to be. The AI in this game, decent, not great, but they do they do move. They won't just stay in one position and allow you to shoot them over and over. And often you'll kind of try and sneak up on them and discover that they weren't where you thought they were, which does definitely keep things interesting in regards to the combat. What do you want? I think the AI may have some set pathways that it follows, because you do often get that idea of two, two guys bunching up one, one behind the other. Oh, there goes the shield. Crows! Success! Victoire at the pose! And then we go through the uh, painstaking process of looking through all their things, which they, as they said previously, they have helpfully packed into beautiful little boxes for us so we can rifle through their personal belongings and discover that their most prized possessions was, in fact, three silver eagles and a banana. That's right, a banana. I shall search your bag for your candy bar. Mm, nom, nom, nom. Uh, the tower protects the lamb from the false shepherd, which is, of course, you. I mean, it's quite a bit of a tribute, really, to, to our general menace that we can uh, make them build a whole tower. But, of course, that is a lie as well, in terms of Bioshock Explained. Uh, the tower is not there to protect them from you, although that is a, a kind of a secondary bonus. The tower is there to contain Elizabeth's power. The whole tower holds a massive siphon, um, which siphons off her power, because when, when she is a young girl, she keeps saying, when I was a young girl, I could actually create these things, but now I'm older, I can only um, kind of view them. The the tower is what stops her from becoming that all-powerful creature that she kind of does at the end. Although it isn't clear actually whether she is actually omnipotent or just omniscient. And for those of you that aren't um, religiously studied, is she just all-knowing? 
or is she actually all powerful as well? Um, she she does transport us around, but she doesn't actually kind of kill anything or levitate anything. So uh, it is impossible for us to know at this uh, juncture. But maybe the DLC will provide a bit more. Uh, knowledge on it. Although they haven't said with the DLC they have said that the DLC won't just be kind of like a bit more booker but in regards to which characters it covers is yet unknown. Ride the gondola. Maybe a little bit later. Ah, and that's how you get into the office which I just searched from the window. Which is now completely empty. Brilliant, sir. It's a, a lovely door. Any more useful upgrades yet? Nope. And I couldn't afford them even if I wanted to. And we're doing pretty good on salts, and we're doing pretty good on machine gun ammo, so we'll just carry on as we are. Is that going to shoot me? I don't think it is. Now, of course, this is our first look at the uh, travelling via Skyhook, which is an amazing way to travel. Proceed to the island by means of the skyline. The skylines, huh? Those things them coppers came riding in on back by the lottery. Indeed, that's what we're going to travel by. Obviously, one of the features of a, a Bioshock game is always the I can't get through that door. What do I do? How do I get around it? Ah, you need the Hoonja thing, which requires you going 10 miles in the opposite direction to get the Hoonja thing. Um, so. That tradition continues very strongly in Bioshock Infinite as we travel, first of all, to. Uh, Monument Island, and then later to the, uh... Oh, there's someone there to take out. Hello! Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. You've got something in your ear. I got it. It was your brain. Here is the infusion. No, oh, now I did want to go shield, but we're so close to filling the infu this, the uh, the salts mm, decisions. Uh, no, I want to. I do want to finish the salts. Perfect. And apparently, accidentally get myself drunk on beer. Brilliant. Uh, I've just damaged my own salt by getting drunk and can't see a thing. Uh, we apologise for the quality of this video. The uh, protagonist is pissed. And let us continue along the path of righteousness, albeit in a somewhat more blurred way. Okay, this time I will attempt not to drink all the beer, and we've got a nice little voxophone from Mr. Comstock. And the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great, and he repented he had made man on the earth. Rain! Forty days and forty nights of the stuff, and he left not a thing that walked alive. You see, my friends, even God is entitled to a do-over. And what is Columbia if not another ark for another time? The uh, story of uh, Noah in the Bible is always seen as this kind of nice little kind of happy story of animals in the ark and a, a bit of water here or there. But the bit that's never kind of emphasised in good old Sunday school is the fact that um, the ark is needed because God literally murders every human being and animal on the face of the planet. Now Comstock's kind of idea here is to try and replicate that. We are the ark. And by raining down flames upon New York in 1984, we are then kind of redoing the uh, the destruction that is brought by by Comstock before. Now that was an appalling jump. What happened to my strike? It was me. That did not go as I intended. I might actually die here. Still alive, but where did the other one go? There it is. So I get some elevation, I could probably reach it. Okay, so as part of our tutorials today, I'll show you how not to jump off the skyline. Thank you for the salt. I always wonder on these games how they choose like the names of these uh, kind of like incidental kind of 
carriages? I mean, are these like developers in the in the games? Are they uh, people that worked on it? Are they like heroes to them? Are they their kids? I'm sure. I'm sure they must have a meaning. They're not just going to grab the dictionary and call them Fred. Who are you, Mr. Kerner? Tell me. Or are they, in fact, actual uh, real products from the 19, from the early 1900s or late 1800s? Who knows? If you know, perhaps stick it in the comments and uh, enlighten me, as hopefully I enlightened you. Where are we trying to get to? Let's head up there. All right, we can carry on over there, but let's wander in here. Stop moving! He kept moving, made me sad. One of the other reasons I kind of changed the melee was I, I originally put melee to middle mouse, and I have still got it on middle mouse, but I've also got it on a keyboard key, because um, I found it quite hard to with middle mouse to get those executions working properly. Um, but now I just kind of keep holding down the, the keyboard button to do it, and it seems to work a lot quicker and nicer. Let's get along, travelling along our way. And of course when you're on the uh, skyline you can of course speed up and slow yourself down as you will. Whether that takes you into Stand down. Stand down. good things or bad things. Now, this is our first little discussion with Comstock. Now, some of the people online have said that when Comstock speaks, you can hear a slowed down version of Booker speaking in the background. Now, I'm not entirely sure. I think it just might be a kind of a type uh, cheeky voice. But I'm always up for a bit of a conspiracy theory. So as we go past these guys, hello, how you doing? How's your face? Um, see what you think. Can you hear Booker's voice um, in the background of what's going on here? I know why you have come, false shepherd. I see every sin and lack of your soul. Wounded me, the Pinkertons, the drink, the gambler, and of course, Anna. And now, to repay a debt, you've come from my land. But not all debts can be repaid, Booker. You don't know me, pal. Prophecy is my business, Mr. As blood as yours. Do you know why these men will die for me? Because I have seen their future in the glory. And hence they are content. What brought you to Columbia, Booker? Booker? Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt? This will end in blood, Dwight. Then again, it always does with you, doesn't it? It always ends in blood. <laughs> Of course, we've got loads of references in that particular section. Uh, why does he know so much? Skyline, Monument Island. Why does he know so much about us? Well, first of all, uh, he was he was us when we were at uh, the Battle of Wounded Knee, and then since then, of course, he has been watching us through the tears. He also needed us, which is why he took such an interest in us. Uh, he found out about about our gambling debts, our alcohol problems, so he eventually he could buy, sadly, our daughter from us, um, Anna. Um, Anna is Elizabeth. He bought Elizabeth, um, hence why he, again he knows about that particular debt. He knows everything bad we've ever done, but I would like to morally justify that um, some of those bad things were at least caused by by Comstock. Now we uh, we our nose was bleeding there. Now we did, the nose bleeding thing doesn't really come back until later in the game, uh, but it happens when kind of your memory is getting kind of rewritten or confused between two timelines. In talking to Comstock, we are directly talking to an alternative timeline or a multi-universe, and that is why our nose is bleeding because uh, we're both the same guy. And as we ascend, uh, we shall um, discuss more some of the differences You've between. Come to lead my lamb astray, but thy crook is bent and thy path is twisted. twisted. Go back to the Sodom from which you came. 
differences between ourselves and Comstock. Now clearly Comstock is a lot older um, than us. He's white haired, long beard, and obviously anyone can grow a beard, that's not, a, that's not much the issue. He probably grew the beard because of the kind of religious connotations that go with it. But why the ageing? Well the answer comes back to uh, the machine. Um, as you read through some of the, uh, the Vox tapes from uh, Lutess and Lutess, they talk about how the um, looking through the tears and using the tears has affected uh, Comstock. It makes him sterile, it makes him age, it gives him cancer. The reason why we look so different um, is because he has been decaying through use of these machines. But we are both the same age. Uh, we are approximately um, 38, 39, um, almost, uh, 20 years-ish further on from the events of the battle at Wounded Knee. to take this thing to Monument Island. And we're in the first of uh, two airships, uh, one of which takes us to the girl and one of which takes us uh, with um, away. Um, Lady Comstock and Father Comstock's two different um, modes of transport. The word of the prophet, again, no sign of kind of Christian teachings here, just the kind of pseudo religion invented by the prophet himself. And let's have a nice look at this nun because uh, she's not going to last very long. Okay, I'm sure I can get this thing going. The Lord forgives everything, but I'm just a prophet, so I don't have to. Amen. Amen. Jesus! Yeek! Nah. Out of here. And with the greatest rule in the world, it is time to leg it from the crazy... Manan. And we're going to take a dive. As Booker introduces us to some lovely new swear words. expecting to be attacked, but I seem to be fine. Anyone down there? And a handy sign taking us towards Monument Island, which has been closed by the Order of the Prophet. Now, it um, appears that she, uh, the Monument Island was closed when um, Elizabeth hit puberty. Some of the signposts that we'll see in a minute um, discuss how her powers increased exponentially when she hit that particular age. And still no new vigors, and that was the point at which she tried to uh, get everyone else out of there. And that's an auto save. So this seems like a good place to end our commentary for part four. I hope you have enjoyed the uh, uh, continued b uh, Bioshock explanation and discussion. Um, please give the video a like and subscribe if you want to make sure you see the uh, future parts as well. And if you've got any other theories you'd like to share or discuss, then do stick them into the comment section and I'm more than happy to debate them and um, talk them through with you. So thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.